Hey guys, what's going on? So today I'm going to be doing a video on the impression that I'm going to bring to Fort Indian Town Gap this year. So it's the 94th Infantry Division, 302nd Infantry Regiment. The company, it varies. I'm not really sure what the group that I'm with is doing, but um, for this in particular video, I'm going to do Company C. Now, during this battle, you got to understand that they were moving companies constantly, relieving and attacking or relieving and attacking just to kind of cycle guys out so that they weren't exhausted in going into a fight. So, um, in particularly, on the night of uh, January 31st, 1945, they brought um, orders up to, I think his name was Lieutenant Robinson, that his company, Company C, was going to be taking the initiative in attacking Camp Holtz Woods, which is the battle that ran right around the time that Fort Indian Town Gap is this year, which is uh, the 31st to the 4th. The battle, uh, I think it lasted till the, it lasted after the 8th but of February, but um, I'm not really too sure on that, uh, exactly when it ended. But um, yeah, so pretty much I'm gonna go into equipment, um, stuff like that, little ins and outs, and hopefully you guys enjoy the video. All right, guys, so for this portion of the video, it's just going to be on the uniform. The uniform is going to include the helmet or the head uh, headgear and the footwear. So for the head, uh, you know, we'll start off with the jacket. So for the jacket, um, with this, you pretty much just see guys wearing M43 jackets over other issued jackets at the time. So you will see a guy here and there wearing an M41 or this and that but it's mostly the M43 jacket. The other thing to note is that during this time, I don't see guys wearing a pile liner. A lot of guys are wearing wool sweaters and, you know, the M37 wool shirt, and that's it. Maybe something underneath, long underwear, a t-shirt, you know, whatever the guy was comfortable with. Other than that, there's really no in-between. It's mostly guys, like I said, M43 and the wool sweater. So when we move over to the pants... In most photographs, it seems like guys are wearing wool trousers. I could be wrong, but there are ones that definitely look like wool trousers and ones that definitely look like M43 trousers. So I would definitely say it's more of the wool trousers you'll see commonly versus obviously the M43 trousers. But both were issued and both were used. So it's a layering system. You could use the cotton to let that get wet and have these dry underneath or just simply remove these and use just the wool pants. It's it's up to the guy that's doing it, so. Standard trouser belt, not much to talk about with that. The helmets we'll go over first and then we'll move on to footwear. Kind of jumping all around, it's all good though. Um, the helmets I see are three types. That's pretty much it. So for the helmets you see netted, nothing, which is just a straight up steel pot. And then you'll see guys wearing gas hoods either under or on top of the shell. So most of the time, it's these two right here. That's all you'll see. And as, you know, as guys are accustomed to the cold, some guys might have had the gas hood. Some might not have. It's, it's up to the person. So mainly for a uniform, that's what I've seen. And the last thing we'll go over is the boots. So for the boots, these are uh, these would have been M forty M forty four. Yeah, I think they are M forty four overshoes or shoe packs. I apologize. So for the shoe packs, these these are reproductions that I made myself. Um, a lot of people do these, and it's a little iffy. Me, I'd rather have a regular original pair, but I don't want to ruin them. So this is a good option for. Anybody wondering how to do this, I will make a video on it eventually, but the main thing to note for shoe packs is the 10 eyelet system that they have going. So the first five eyelets here are all straight up eyelets. And then after that, you can see, yeah, I'm pretty sure you can see that. These are speed laces, that's what they're called. Um, it's just like a little hook. And the next five, or actually, I'm sorry, the next four, are speed laces and then the last one at the top is normally a regular eyelet. The other thing to note is if these were real they would have a stitching going across here at around the 
it's the it's usually around the gap between the regular eyelet and the speed lace there's another piece of stitching going across here to reinforce this as a boot and then here there would be a wider fin going around the edge just to keep the snow kind of like a gripping it's just it's all for grip everything that they did on the bottoms of the soles obviously is for grip that's how shoes work so that's pretty much all there is to note about those I'll do a video about them at some point and how to make them, but a very amateur way of making shoe packs pretty much for events and stuff like that. So next we'll go into field equipment and stuff like that, personal items and whatnot. Okay guys, so for this part of the video, we're gonna be going over the equipment and personal items of the impression, so We'll go equipment, then personal items. So for equipment, you're pretty much just gonna be carrying the standard web equipment setup for any infantry soldier. And that includes the 1928 pack, which can be dropped or set down at a later date. But initially moving, yes, you will carry a 1928 pack. And then afterwards you will see guys completely drop it and be working with strictly their belt. So in your haversack, you would have your raincoat, your uh, shelter half, your, you know, the poles and pegs and rope that go along with that shelter half, your rations, a mess kit with utensils, a personal items, bag of some sort, or just socks straight up. And that's pretty much it. Maybe a sweater, but you probably would be wearing the sweater. So it's up to what's, you know, what the person is using and isn't using. Everything that isn't being used is kept in this haversack. So... We move on from the 1928 haversack to the 1923 cartridge belt. Uh, like I said, this cartridge belt is m really important in, you know, a GI impression. So you'll be working with your cartridge belt most of the time for this impression. So obviously cartridge belt, M43 shovel with cover, and then you have the Carlisle bandage pouch, the M1910 canteen cup cover and canteen, and then the... Uh, M7 bayonet with the sheath and all that fun stuff. So that's pretty much it for a web setup. And then I like to throw in two bandoliers just because obviously it's an assault. You would want ammunition. So the best way of doing that is carrying bandoliers or stuffing M blocks into your pockets, depending on what you were doing. So that we'll move on to the personal items. So with the personal items, I'll show you, I mean, it's pretty much how I have it laid out. This is usually how I carry everything. So this pocket, I have all of my paper and personal items and stuff like that. So letters, we have a French phrase book, we have a German phrase book and a pocket guide to France. So these would have been relative to where they were, you know, obviously, like I said, relatively. And on top of that, Germany is someplace they were entering just about now, so. Definitely would have had something like that on them. Prayer book, a wallet with you know various stuff in it, and then uh, a pen. So we move over to the other pocket, and I usually carry a rat like any sort of uh, K ration just as a box, just to carry stuff and keep it waterproof. So I have a can opener. I have the K ration box. Uh, I do have. I think I just have toilet paper and a few other miscellaneous personal items in here. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So we have cream substitute. We got some nice toilet paper. It's always, always helpful. A spoon and some chiclets, and that's about it. So we move down to this pocket, and we have my wool gloves, a Jeep cap, and then for this pocket, I have just a few boxes of already opened ammunition and two hand grenades. Now, being that Company C previous to this was given demolitions to help destroy pillboxes and stuff like that, I'm sure you would have seen some form of uh, Composition B or something to help blow the pillboxes up. I have grenades. I'm sure there were other things issued besides, you know, just grenades. So moving down here, we have the uh, gas mask bag with all of the other personal items in it. So in here, I usually carry a K ration, a 
spare m1 spare parts bag this i do have some spare parts in but i usually mostly use it to carry stuff and keep it dry we have a mini pack of playing cards here uh i saw these and i thought it would be interesting to throw them in for an impression just because of how tiny they are this is about the size of a box that a zippo would come in now this is much smaller than a stereotypical size playing card so i just thought it was interesting and maybe something guys might have used that's pretty much all there is to say about that. Um, tobacco pouch with, well, there would be tobacco in it, and then with a pipe, uh, matches, or a lighter. Usually matches are for a pipe and cigarettes, but a lighter would be more appropriate for a cigarette. And then shaving kit, soap dish, toothbrush, oops, some shaving cream, a D-ration, a scarf, and that's literally it. So the impression, uh, the impressions, personal items obviously will vary to each person. The, you know, the next person that does this impression doesn't have to use every bit of this, you know, this personal item set up and every bit of this, um, equipment set up. It varies with each, uh, soldier. So, or obviously which weapon you were issued as well. And that's really all there is to, t you know, to talk about. So most of this is, changeable to whatever you know w w weapon you like i said that you were issued or um your own personal take on what you like to carry in your pockets so i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i'll be making more like this soon so stick uh, stick around and yeah that's pretty much it